Oh, all right. Welcome to the Real Talk Podcast, episode 121. Uh, I've still got nothing to do. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, that can fuck off. <laughs> Fucking intense banjo plays. Pump it. Can't unhear it now, can you? Pump it. It's just some hillbilly in the corner. Pump yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> diddly diddly. <laughs> I had a serious conversation planned for today and I've just fucked it all entirely with dueling banders, haven't I? <sighs> <sighs> if, if there's any one of our fans out there who has an electric banjo, can someone please make... Can someone please redo our open? But just like really intense banjo. Can somebody, yeah, can somebody redo the Real Talk podcast theme song but with dueling banjos? Yeah. It's just like. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what? I might just record you doing that <laughs> and use that as the, the theme song for a while. I might, I'll find the sound. Uh, you know, off. Yeah, I'll, I'll find like Do you know that what? little snippet. It can't be that hard. Let's just buy two banjos and we'll go from there. <laughs> we'll just buy banjos and just learn how to play it ourselves. It'll be fine. Yeah. All of your shoes will get destroyed. Your teeth will start to fall out. <laughs> we'll have one dude on the jug. Just like... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> like one dude playing the spoons. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, I had a very serious conversation I wanted yes. to have with you today. Yeah. Before we got into inbreeding and dueling banjos. <laughs> Got it. In, got into inbreeding is is strong. <laughs> Talked about inbreeding, <laughs> and got into dueling banjos. Let's go with that. Uh, um, <laughs> it's just something that has popped up in my my peripherals around um, the conversation we're about to have. Again, not incest and dueling banjos. <laughs> it's not intense banjo. <laughs> um, it hasn't been in my peripherals for the last six weeks. I promise you. Um, banjos has been for mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, for me it has for me it has uh, <laughs> yeah real talk we're going strong um no it's just uh something because i've been listening to a lot of uh a lot of D podcasts and a lot of gaming podcasts and mm. i've been trying to catch up catch up on my shit yeah um because it's been a long hard road to get to here yeah um with lockdown and shit yeah um so it's all good and it's all fine um gatekeeping uh, uh, it's, it's been a, a phrase that has been popping up here and there and has obviously has been attributed to a lot of fan bases, um, video games, Star Wars, Harry Potter, you know, any, any major pop culture franchise really has had this, this, uh, the gatekeepers, uh, um, installed at the, the metaphorical front gates of the fandom as a whole. The, um, the people to keep it pure. Yeah. Um. I have the definition of like if you wanted to know officially what gatekeeping was. Yeah. Uh, so the the urban so gatekeeping is actually a, uh, technically it's a traditionally applied to communication like somebody who is uh, deliberately placing roadblocks to stop you from being able to enter the conversation. Yeah, because when you when you uh, said to me, it was you like, we're gate, talking you about can gatekeep gatekeeping conversations. Yeah. So like when you were talking to me about gatekeeping. Because before, like before I met and started hanging out with you and started doing real talk, I used to do sales. And the first time that I ever heard the term gatekeeping is when you're trying to call, cold call someone over the phone and you get the gatekeeper, which yeah. is like you get reception and then they, like you never go further than reception. You never go further than the gatekeeper, which is like, that's, that's where I thought we were going with today. I'm like, why are we talking about receptionists? No, no. Okay. So, so the urban dictionary, right? right. This is in regards to fandom describes it as, so it's, uh, when someone takes it upon themselves to decide who does or does not have access or rights to a community or identity. Uh, so you can apply it to other shit. I'm just going to pop my phone down there. Like yeah. I'm going to need it. That's fair. It is charge pad. <laughs> um, so... It's becoming, I've noticed, mm. maybe, maybe it's not becoming more common or maybe I'm just noticing it more as I become a, an extremely nerdy adult yes. as opposed to a 
extremely nerdy young adult. <laughs> um, <laughs> a nerdy adult with a beard. <laughs> yeah, now I'm a nerdy adult with a Viking brain. Like nice. a badass. Like a badass. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fit right in in your town. Uh, <laughs> looks, not personality. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's, it's it's happening a lot. Uh, yeah. And it it is quite common to have this when fandoms rapidly expand. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you, well, you would have experienced anyway. You're you're just about you're about the same age. Uh, the Star Wars gatekeepers, as it, in fairness, I wasn't old enough because 1999 was a long fucking time ago. Yeah. Um, and I was four. Um, I wasn't even. You were. You I was one. Not, I was one. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, it did happen then, but obviously, with the internet, these things happen at a more extreme scale. Yeah. Um, they, they being the the toxic Star Wars fan base. We've we've been there before. We've been there. We've talked about it. You know, go listen to anything that's got Star Wars on the title. We talk about it. Yeah. Um. But they, I I don't know if you noticed so much when Force Awakens came out. That the second it wasn't perfect, ah, uh, you get the well. If you like the sequel trilogy, you're yeah. not a real Star Wars fan. So uh, first of all, all right, that can there is off. one requirement to be a Star Wars fan, yeah. and that is to like Star Wars. <laughs> what? It's I what? Oh, what? It's and it it is to go I, in defense of gatekeeping. Yeah. Because, like, okay, so it happens for Star Wars. There are, in fairness, there are franchises out there mm. that it doesn't happen. No. You know what my... The, this, the, I'm, there are two massive fan bases. Yeah. All right? For this shit that never get fucking talked about because they're all just really nice to each other. Yeah. And they're both movies. And they are Back to the Future. Yep. And Jurassic Park. Yeah. Because Back to the Future is just like, it's perfect. And everything that pops up with it and like the references and the games, everyone's just like, oh, it's really fun. Like there's board games and shit. Never heard anyone say a bad thing about like, uh, about Back to the Future at all, ever. No, never. Right? I've, I've never heard it. And Jurassic say. Park, yeah. there is something about it that has just made every single fan of Jurassic Park just go, fuck yeah, dinosaurs. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Because it is, right? So it it's is. like, even like, I do, I do that with most things. Um, like, there's a scene. Okay, spoilers for Free Guy going forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just minor spoilers. It's not nothing major. Just skip ahead like a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, the, this is how you should react to yeah. shit. Right. So, everything Star Wars related that gets released. Yeah. Right. Should cause the same reaction that I had when Ryan Reynolds pulled out a lightsaber in Frigo. Yeah. Because Star Wars shouldn't have been there. No. By rights. It was. He pulled the lightsaber out, it played the Star Wars music, and I spent the next 30 seconds like this. Yeah, pretty much. For yeah. reference, for those of you listening, I have my mouth open, my hands in the air. Yes. And with in a grin. pure, pure fucking delight. <laughs> pure delight. I literally went, fuck yes! <laughs> Yay, lightsaber! It was just like, lightsaber. <laughs> Da, yeah. da, 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 and I was like, yes! But like, like yeah, you're right. Like, Star even... Wars in a non-Star Wars canon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <Yay>, lightsaber. <laughs> Pretty much, it was exactly that. And it was but like, like, it, it like, that stuff. It's okay, like that that was in it because Star Wars fans who aren't toxic will be like, yay, something that I love is in a movie that's just funny. Same with like people who are Marvel fans because. There was a moment the, the where same scene, the, the same, same scene where he pulls um, out Captain America's shield. Yeah, and he it, it's it's funny, right? So you see the symbol come up on like his little like item select thing. Yeah, I guess it's his his inventory. Yeah, um, and then he like pulls it out and he blocks the death punch with it. Yeah, and you see what it is from behind, and if you know in that scene, it's like if you know, you know. If, I was like, yeah. it's Captain America's shield. It is. Um, and it was that moment where I like completely forgot. That it was a Disney movie, technically, because it's Fox. Yeah. Um, that I'm like, oh shit! Yeah. Like that means that, like, obviously, they've got the rights. Yeah. To like I, to, I to Disney it. shit. It's fine. Carry on. I'm gonna keep with my explanation. And just that scene where he punches the shield and it turns around and he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah, like, right? and it just goes. 
da, 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 da. and I was like, <laughs> Captain America! <laughs> and then, like, Chris, obviously Chris Evans is in it for, like, f- like five seconds. Yeah. Where it just, like, cuts to him and he's watching the game on his phone. Yeah. And he just goes, what the shit? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's shit like that that you're kind of like, yes, more of that. Like, that, that is... But that is the fan base embracing that we should be having. Yeah. And I've noticed in the last, it's really been sort of six months. We were the first, well, we we were part of the first wave of re-entry into Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. Uh, If you don't know that we're into Dungeons & Dragons, um, welcome to your first episode of the Real (laughs) Real Talk Podcast. podcast. (laughs) Um, It's fun here. You'll stay. You'll be really into D&D by the end of it. You should subscribe. Uh, like, (laughs) Like, share and subscribe. And... Um, leave a comment telling Jared how good looking he is today. <laughs> he needs it. Um, nice and um, if you don't think he's beautiful, keep it to yourself. <laughs> if you add him on Twitter, that's where no horrible people go to Twitter. Nice people go to the comment section. It's great. <laughs> right, there's a system. You'll get used to it. I wonder uh, if we will <laughs> ever get gatekeepers. <laughs> <gasps> gatekeepers like, to real talk that'd imagine, be really fucking hard it's um, like do you like anything ever <laughs> then you, you're you not allowed to watch it because you don't like it enough it's like when we blow up like five years or like, like a, in like, like six, three to, six days from now in like six days from now we're like like fucking blown up and <laughs> all the people who have watched from like day one be like yeah but you're not a real real talk fan if you haven't seen the very first episode if you haven't episode. seen the the Marvelous Marvel podcast from 2019. <laughs> where, we, where we like ask Trent to be like, can we record can a we podcast? Can we please record in your bar? <laughs> can we record an episode in your bar, please? And he was like, why are you fucking asking? <laughs> you, we're closed. You have keys. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking but, weird. But, um, weird yeah. cunts on us. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, you're right. Like, we are massive, massive fans. Yeah, but like, I, we, we were, we, we snuck in before it started. Um, we were part of what it what is we obviously we didn't realize that it was going to be at the time but we were part of a uh D D renaissance oh god yeah. um which is great obviously there are people out there um like people we we've heard of there's obviously like there are pod, there are plenty of podcasts oh god yeah um obviously everyone knows everyone knows matt mercer and critical role there he's like the the goat of D D. Yeah. he is the michael jordan of D. <laughs> He, legit yeah he knows it, this has been proven he knows more about dungeons and dragons than the people who currently write dungeons and dragons i think the only it's person fucked. who probably knew more about dungeons and dragons Brenner. was probably gary gygax oh uh, gary gygax and obviously. he made dungeons and dragons and he invented dungeons and dragons <laughs> um but yeah 100 percent. so it's like shit like that where you're like okay well you know that there are people out there who who know shit, and obviously Matt Mercer is not going to be one of these gatekeeping people. No, um, but it was like we snuck in before like D and D fans realized what was happening and went, "No, build the walls, yeah, stop them from coming." Yeah. And you're like, "You do it." It's it baffles me, right? Especially when it comes to like any tabletop role playing game. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to use D and D as an example because that's the one we play all the time. Yes, but the example of this and it, this shits me. Because, like, if you follow, it's following shit to a logical conclusion. Like, mm. follow your train of thought to the end. Don't just, like, do shit. Yeah. And this, that goes for everything in life. Yeah. Um, if you gatekeep people and you stop them from coming in, yeah. it doesn't get popular and money doesn't go to it so it doesn't get better. Yeah. If more people are into D&D, you'll get more D&D stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how bad other people are. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, like, I think I remember watching a thing about it um about like there was actually a video i think matt mercer was in it for like people who were getting into D and and like the renaissance of D and stuff and like a lot of the people who are gatekeeping this thing that has been around oh, for fuckwits. uh well yeah yeah <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to put it they are they're fuckwits and like it sounds blunt but like if you don't let people play because they haven't been through what you had to go through to play it then you're you're depriving those people who want to be part of something that you love so much because they haven't gone through the same experience you did. That'd be like me telling somebody they're not allowed to watch the Marvel movies because they didn't, or they're not allowed to watch like uh, the Batman movies or anything like that, or watch DC because they didn't read uh, 
the first issues of 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 Batman Detective of like Batman Detective or like they didn't read the Detective series yeah, or anything like that. So like or or they can't watch the movies because they didn't watch the TV shows that I watched growing up as a kid. Yeah, all right. So that's actually that that is a good point, right? So um, there's like the whole book to movie thing. That's that's actually a really good example because um, again, not too often in this particular franchise, but uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, uh, there are a very, very intense, retarded group of people <laughs> who genuinely believe that you are not a Harry Potter fan yeah. if you haven't read the books. Now, I understand it, yeah. right? Okay, I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast. I've read the books, this whole series, at least a dozen times. Are you a Harry Potter fan? At least a dozen. <laughs> I was didn't, about to say you're wearing realize. a Deathly Hallows T-shirt, um, <laughs> but like. Okay, so I've read it a lot. Yes. Like, it, it is one of my favorite book franchises. I will frequently go back and read or listen to the audiobook or something every... I probably dip into the audiobook series and listen to the whole thing through probably once a year. Yeah. Like, because it takes me like three weeks. Well, you enjoy <laughs> it. Because I spend a shitload of time on it. Yeah. But, and I, I get, because people are like, oh, you don't get Harry Potter because you haven't read the books. Yes, you should encourage people to read the books mm. because the books have that extra juicy material. I've been telling you to read the books for two years. Yes, um, I'll get to it. I, <laughs> but that's the thing, right? I, I also understand that not everyone reads. No, I've always been a reader. A reader. Yeah. I enjoy reading. And like obviously, if you've seen our social media, we're on day 65, 66 of... Day 66. Yeah, we're on day 66. Um, of 75 hard. Yeah. Uh, one of the requir- I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but like yeah. one of the requirements of that is to read 10 pages of a non-fiction book. Yeah. Not something you would ever have done before. No, God no. Um, but you even said to me the other day that now that you've been forced to read 10 pages a day, you actually enjoy it. Yeah. Like I so, haven't done it yet today, but like I look forward to I mean, reading it every day. But now you... Yeah, but that's the thing. Now you are looking into reading for your own entertainment yes and now i would say read harry potter yes <laughs> you know because that's okay like again there are the the extreme opposite which is that you can't be into harry potter it's for kids harry potter is for everyone all yeah. right I, I don't necessarily like to clear this up which is a shit thing that i have to do now i don't i don't agree with jk rowling uh <laughs> Her personal beliefs and opinions yeah. are what they are and that is all right neither I don't think that I now have to not enjoy this franchise of stuff. I am um, a very big believer, and sorry to cut you off, but no. I am a very big believer of just because the person... I feel like you can separate the art from the artist. I feel like you get what you want to get from the books, the TV shows, the movies, the extended lore. You get what you want out of it, out of those stories. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the actual person who who directed or wrote or fucking drew or anything like that. Like, if fucking George Lucas ended up being a twat in real life, I'd probably still... I would still love the... I'd still love the Star Wars movies. Yeah, grew, it's, it's, yeah, it's just one of those It's things. just one of those things. I feel like you should feel more... You shouldn't have to feel like you shouldn't enjoy... No, 100% enjoy not. Enjoy that because of a stupid thing that she said once yeah so yeah but yeah so that's 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 a different leave that before we we expand to that (laughs) yeah but i feel like people go about things the wrong way i i i get it because there is this and i i've had it sometimes where you want to go i liked it first Uh, oh yeah um it's the first people i don't really have I've had it maybe once or twice yeah. where it's like, and it's not even, it's, it's a very fleeting. You're like, yeah, that was my thing. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, but after you, you should be able to go, Oh, but now you, now you can share this and you can share opinions and you can, you know, you can have conversations about it and all this shit. And yeah. Like that is how you should feel. Yeah. Pretty much the time. Um, so it's like, it's good. Yeah. So instead of standing at the gate, the metaphorical gate of a franchise. Let's use Harry Potter for example. Right. Like the, the first example is just like, okay, they watched the movies when they were kids. Most people did. I they did. Re- they're really into the movies. They really enjoy them. Hmm. Right. You're one of those people. Yeah. Right. Instead of going, 
you're not allowed to be into Harry Potter, fuck you, you haven't read the books, go, hey man, if you really like those, you should try reading the books because there's a lot more stuff in there and you can expand on stuff that exists. We're stuck, right? You've yeah. read, you read the books first, you've watched the movies, you know everything. Yeah. Well, you don't know everything, obviously. Nobody knows everything. Yeah. But, like, you have consumed max amount of Harry <laughs> Potter media. Yeah. Right? That's it. Like, yeah. You can help somebody experience that extra shit. Yeah. You can you can guide people to... Yeah. Like, Absolutely. ...enjoying this stuff more. And it's not for everyone. No. God, no. Like, but that, they shouldn't be judged for that. No. That's like, obviously, we're hardcore nerds. Yes. Shock. But Shocker. even things and like this this is a universe that even Tom has gone really, really deep into, but like Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, right. yes. I would add right this and this is the only time and we will get into that in like we're gonna do it maybe looking at doing a show that's book versus movies and all that shit. Ah, right. But and if we do, this will be one of them. Right. I actively encourage people to watch the movies first. Yes. You wanna get into Lord of the Rings? Please go and watch Lord of the Rings. Yes. You can if you enjoy it, go back and read the books. Yeah. They're not an easy read. No. I re- I read right. Humble humble break. Humble break, yeah. I read quick. Yeah. I read a lot. Yep. And I find things easier to read than yeah. most like the average person. Yeah. Like I, I just fly through shit. Yeah. But that's because I've read since I was six. Like yeah. it's it's one of my favourite pasta. Yeah. <laughs> so it's well, it, it's a yeah, good... so I'm now 26. I, I've been literally reading books for 20 years. Yeah. Like... Yeah, 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 absolutely. I've gotten pretty fucking good at it. Yeah. So it's like, I struggled with Lord of the Rings. I still struggle with Lord of the Rings, and I've read it before. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's not going to be for everyone. And I don't think that that should be the be-all and end-all of, yeah. you know, Lord of the Rings. I would actually say that a more user-friendly way of... <laughs> consuming this media is to watch the movies and then go and watch YouTube videos of people who break down that shit, who have taken the time to read the extras and go through it. Because honestly, yeah, in spots, the Lord of the Rings is boring as fuck. Well, that's what I've always found from like when asking you, and I don't know if Tom has read the books. He has. He has. Yeah. But like, from what I've from what I've got from you guys is that in the books, there's a lot of explaining everything that they do it everywhere. Was the best way I found to describe it, it was very, very, very definitely yeah. written by a 1920s professor. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> well, like, everything is, like, it, it's written... Oh, old, it might be 1940-something. Like, it's like 1940s, but like everything but like, is written he, old-timey. He, it was very, very... Well, not old-timey. Like It's written in like plain fucking English. Right. Like modern-day plain English. But it was very definitely written by an old-school tweed jacket-wearing English professor. Yeah. It is just... Some spots is just... It's too much. Actually... So I'm trying to remember his name. I always get like the like the author's name because they both sound similar. It's like J R R Tolkien. J R R Tolkien, not J R R Martin. <laughs> George R. R. George R. R. Martin, who wrote so, Game of Thrones. Who wrote Game of Thrones? But that's another one. <laughs> and like so, in so J so Tolkien, and I just want to put this out there was one of the first like proper fucking nerds because he not only did he write a series of books that changed fantasy but also wrote a fucking language to go along with it <laughs> yeah there's actually uh, uh, to be clear and i'm not going to go into this right now either but it, it, it has also been brought to my attention now as a 26 year old which is some of the lord of the rings yeah like backstory and some of the creations and stuff they are really racist <laughs> <laughs> What? No. No, but of, like, like a series of books written in the nineteen forties. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit like that. Like people are like, it's racist, and you're like, no. And then they're like, there's this, and then there's this, and then there's this, and then there's this, and you're like, I'm not surprised, but also I'm very shocked. It reminds me of like the like the argument of like people like people love uh, uh, H.P. Lovecraft. He is yeah. super and they go, racist. He was mentally ill and very racist, and you're like. 
Oh, what? What? A guy who writes about space monsters that can go in between dimensions and a sea god that makes you go insane if you look at it? From 1914 something or other is weird and racist. It's ha- like, yeah, because he existed in 1914. When, like, like, you... I know you- racism. <laughs> <Yeah>. Racism. <laughs> I was like, it, yeah, there's some weird shit. There's... You can apply that to a lot of things. There are a few books out there where it's like, and this was written in 1862. It's got mildly racist undertones. And you're like, you should be happy it's mildly racist. (laughs) Slaves existed back then. (laughs) Oh, God. Like, there was a book the other day. I was like, came with a thing. And it was like, oh, I think that guy who wrote that was kind of racist. You're like, kind of racist. It was written in 1822. I guarantee you. That man owned other men. Yeah, I'm, like, I guarantee you, he owned somebody. <laughs> somebody was weeding his you garden. You think he was racist? I promise you, he was racist. He had a gardener, and I bet you he didn't pay. I him. would stake my fucking life on it. <laughs> if you were white well, back I then, I don't you owned think somebody. he was racist in the standards that we hold racism now. He was racist because he existed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's okay, but pointing it out from anything before 1990 <laughs> is ridiculous. <laughs> like it's... I just came up with like a really bad joke for like, and now this gatekeeper's racist. <laughs> yeah, you're not a proper racist. <laughs> if you weren't back there when it started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, and I'm, I, I know, like, I'm not trying to make light of racism, but like, you know, at some point you are going to have to realize that like a time period is a time period and yet yeah, deal with it, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I agree with Disney's method of putting, you know, a warning at the thing being like, yo, this was made in 1932. We don't agree with this anymore, but uh, also, like, it's a classic like, Peter Pan. Yeah, um, <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> Actually, I had a, a conversation with Nicola about this last night. Oh, yeah? Where I was just like, oh, because I saw a movie that was on Disney Plus called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Watch it. It's a laugh. Right. It's also not ver- not appropriate. Okay, watch it if you don't mind being offended a lot. Um, <laughs> oh, and I was like, I'm just going to flick the beginning of this on because I want to see if it comes with a race warning before it. Yeah. And it doesn't. And I was like, oh, okay, they're just going to strike. Right, play this shit and pretend like nothing's happened. Okay, cool. And she was like, why would there be a race warning in front of it? I was like, because it's racist and because there's one in front of Peter Pan. And she was like, oh, why is Peter Pan racist? And I was like, the Indians. And she was uh, like, is that the kids playing uh, um, like cowboys and Indians? And I was like, no, no, the actual Indians. What does make the red man red? And she was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, we just, you know, put a warning on it and just pretend it's under the rug. Yeah. Uh, it is one yeah, of those Because you can't scenes... delete everything before 1990. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, like, before we go back onto our actual topic, before we jump back onto the rails, it's like, I remember watching that as a kid, and even as a kid, I'm like, is that, that seems o- wrong. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> That's not right, Carrie. I mean, like, should they be doing that? <laughs> yeah, there's a few, few alarm bells. Yeah. They're uh, old school Tom and Jerry as well. That's just, I def- if you ever go back. There's yeah. a there's a a couple of episodes of Tom and Jerry, um, based on like a an island that definitely has tribal cannibals on it. Yeah, it's very bad. Very bad. Very bad. It's but... definitely not not good. <laughs> but um, like, oh god. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Anyway, yeah. So like gatekeeping. <laughs> We were off the rails. Ding, 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 ding. It's like that was the line, and then we just went we. Yeah, okay, but we got back. back. It's okay. <laughs> okay, it was like now. we kept crossing the rail, but we never we were never back on it. But now we're back on the rails. Um, <laughs> but yeah, tabletop games. Yeah, it's 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 fucking hard. It's really fucking hard to get into tabletop games. It is. It is very hard. Like we are persistent motherfuckers. Oh god, yeah. Like we we talked about D and D. For like eighteen months, Before like I, I'd thought about it for ages, but like yeah. you'd thought about it for ages, yeah. and we talked about playing for like well over a year yeah. before we actually were like, I was it you? I think it was me. I went. I, oh, I think fuck you. I went, fuck it. The, I went fuck this shit, and I went and bought the D and D like the Dungeons and Dragons starter pack. Yeah, and it came with like pre-made character sheets and blank character sheets. Uh, the player manual i think yeah it came with the player manual like the player handbook and a pre-written like short quest yeah and i was like fuck this we're gonna play dnd yeah 
Um, and then we got really drunk one night and was like, let's play D&D. &D, and we just sort of worked it out from there. We were really bad. We're now a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but like, <laughs> we had to actively seek this shit. Like, yeah. it wasn't just, there was nowhere to go. Like, there are places you can go. Yeah. Like, there's the games workshop, but there's not many of those around anymore. And they're not. Well, definitely like now, like if you were trying to get into it, like and like around this time, there was no way you have to like, like really look up that stuff and like oh, you'd have to find people it. who are willing to teach you how to play because it's hard to teach yourself how to like how to play D and D because Honestly, a lot of we it is... sort of had to wing it. We played a few where we sort of had to work out what we were doing. I listened to a few D and D podcasts to sort of see how other people played it and then we played a game I think... where we were player characters with a dm who has played for a few years and was oh, like yeah. really into it so like that cleaned up a few stuff and then you know corrections here and there and like i i still wouldn't even go close to saying that we were perfect oh god no um but that's sort of the joy i think the realization when i started to write campaigns and yeah. like while i was listening and even like i'm still learning shit now obviously like i listened to the um adventure academy yeah uh, episode how to build your campaign with yeah. um that's uh for those of you who don't know adventure academy is a podcast run by brennan lee mulligan from college college, college humor. humor he they also have a D, &D podcast uh dimension 20 go watch it it's very funny it's very funny um but he did it with matt mercer the goat of dnt yeah um that's <laughs> the goat matt of D &D. the goat mercer um, <laughs> um and it, they they sort of talk about it and even now that like cleared up a few things i was like oh like maybe i am overthinking it. maybe like there is a better way of doing it yeah and it sort of the thing nobody tells you is that the Dungeon Dragons rules are Dungeons and Dragons suggestions. Yeah. Like, legit, like, character stats, spells, weapons, shit, like, character sheets. Yeah. There is a very firm outline for a reason. Right? Yes. You can sort of overfill, you can concave it a little bit, so, yeah. like, if they want a magic item, you can, and that there isn't a magic item that already exists you can mm. go like okay but like it only does this damage and it only has that effect if you roll a d8 and you land on a seven yes you know what i mean like okay there's a you know well, that's actually... it, it only does normal damage and you know there's a one in eight chance that your special ability works yeah which is fine now in fairness there are weapons out there that are fucked oh. i picked one up yesterday yeah. yesterday the day before in a, a campaign that tom wrote and we were like you know we all got to pick a magical item, and I got a, a fucking sword of short uh, life stealing. Yeah, and it gives an automatic so like short swords are a d six. I'm not going to go into the stats, but I automatically do extra damage and get health back. Yeah, like that's fucked. It's like Tom. Uh, Tom actually went out of his way to because my character. I wanted my character that I created to wear a big purple hat. Like it looks like yeah. a wizard's hat. So like, <laughs> I didn't like. I was wearing it at the table. And Tom, I and like Tom said to me, I can give you this. <laughs> and, yeah. he, and like we were fighting a dragon, and like <laughs> he said, like you get advantage when you're fighting dragons when you're wearing this hat, yeah. but only against dragons, nothing else. Which well, is fair. I'll take it. I just want to wear the hat. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a cool hat. Yeah, but, I mean it wasn't. It was a dorky hat, but it was cool. Oh, like, it was so cool dorky. Hat. But like. <laughs> What where I'm going with this whole like extra stats and like bending the rules and shit is that that is coming from two people who played D and D since like first or second edition. Yeah, like, they've been playing for years. Yes, and they are they understand that like there have been good rules and there have been bad rules and there have been things out and they've been taken like realistically fifth edition is only four okay. or five years old. Like it's yeah. not not that old. Yeah. And they're they're saying like bend bend the rules. These are people who are like you make you make your game to suit your players. Yeah, like bend bend the rules, change some shit, add some stuff. Matt Mercer had invented D and D guns. Yeah, like the gunslinger. He, yeah, he, like he has homebrewed a full class which is now included in D and D. Yeah, 
And that's that's a big like, feat. That's massive. Yeah. And he's just like, but gatekeepers won't let you do shit like that. I think because they Dean... they are like purists almost. It's like, but it's un necessary purists it's like oh but we had to deal with you know bullshit rules and like broken systems and you're like yeah but you shouldn't stop new players from joining because they didn't have to deal with the bad stuff yes that's like getting the shits with somebody for being okay because you had food poisoning (laughs) yes (laughs) Like, yeah, pretty You're much. not allowed to eat because I shit myself yesterday. Yes. You're like, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense because now what you should be doing is being like, okay, you can come eat as well, but don't eat that stuff because that stuff will make you shit yourself. Yeah, that's actually like, a it's... really good example because especially with D&D, because I think the, why the gatekeepers in the D&D, in the D&D world is so immense and so hesitant to let people join. It's because it sucked for a really long it's time. It's because, like, well, not, not only it, not, did it, like... It didn't suck, but, like... But, like, you, the game itself was so looked down upon because, like, church groups, like, re- like religious groups, and, like, even social groups. Is, like, social groups and, like, schools and shit. Do you like, know what? The, I, you know, I, I, I only really... Because like, I've always known, right, that, that there was this whole thing about DM, like, Dungeons & Dragons, where it was like, oh, you know, there's a... You know, it's got satanic undertones and like it's it's worshiping the devil and it's yeah. like it encourages people to break the rules and all this stuff and blah 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 fucking blah. Yeah. Um <laughs> Do you know I discovered the 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 one thing about D D that kicked off this whole fucking argument? Yeah. The phrase Dungeon Master. Ah. Uh... The idea that all players are under control of this godlike being. Yep. Yeah. If you've never played D and D before in your life, yeah, right, you've clearly never, if, or you've never been a dungeon master, all right. Yeah, I have never had less control in my fucking life. Yeah, the dungeon. All right, master, you are completely, you are completely at the whim of your of the fucking idiots you are playing. Yes, <laughs> and yeah. I mean that in the most loving way possible. But like DMs have a have control, but they also have no control at the same time. Yeah. But and. With D and D, the fact that like a lot of people who were playing the first edition, like were bullied when they were kids, people who were like, you know, they would play secretly, and you know, they would be bullied at school, and their parents would find out, and they would have it, they would literally burn their like their player character sheets, and like, like people we used to keep it a secret, and now you've come to like a renaissance of people who are like, I actually really want to get involved with this thing yeah, and then people... they say well you didn't have to go through the shit i had to go through as a kid in fact there are there are people we play with that if you were told me five years ago that they wanted to play i would have been fucking stunned oh yeah i was like what yeah like, I, I still like i i when we first started because we hadn't gone there i was still a bit like you know i was like oh what did you do last night i'm like oh, i played dungeons and dragons yeah. Um, yeah but it's like you know and then like but now obviously because like you know a mixture of like i don't give a fuck and <laughs> <laughs> and well it's like i've got i've got i've now got comfortable with my own shit so it doesn't bother me yeah um so a combination of that and a combination of like i am discovering more and more that people either play this game mm. that you don't you just didn't realize or have heard about it and want to give it a go. Yeah. So it was like when people are like, oh, you know, what did you do on fucking Sunday afternoon? It's like, oh, I play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And they're like, ha, oh, like, cool. Like, yeah. And the so- only real hard part is when someone goes, ah, oh, how, do you, how do you play Dungeons and Dragons? And, that- and you go, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've been playing this game for two fucking years and I couldn't tell you. All right? You just sort of roll some dice, you say some shit, and some stuff happens. Yeah. But like... How to play Dungeons and Dragons yeah. is a podcast in its own. Yeah. And we'll, <laughs> we'll probably get to it at some point. At prob- yeah. In fact, we will get to a Dungeons and Dragons thing at some point anyway. Yes. Um, but the other thing is like... And this will probably be the last thing I say because we're sort of going over time now. Um, is that <laughs> when you get like back on the, the whole the whole DMing thing and like everyone assuming that that's like a control thing. Yeah. I heard a great example, like a great like metaphor for what this was the other day. Yeah. And it was like, it was like if you invited all of your friends over for dinner, mm-hmm. right? And then you cooked this really amazing like main course meal. 
yeah. on like all of these sides and then you put it down, right? And then your your guests um, immediately took your main course and threw it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and then really had at the sides. Yeah. And just talked about how good the sides were. Yeah. And how the and, and acted like the sides were the main focus of the meal. Because they know that's not what you'd plan to be the main uh, part of the meal. Yep. It is. It, it is like cooking like roast meat and potatoes, and everyone eating the fucking potatoes. Yep. And pushing the meat off the table because they know that you spent all of your time preparing the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Only like yeah, like the, you could write a quest that I don't know goes. For, it's like fifty pages. And then most likely end up have like your your p like your PCs just saying like actually we don't want to go that way we want to go this way so that's of- fifty pages gone <laughs> yeah we we'll probably do a a D and D based podcast coming forward anyway yeah uh, if you want to see that let us know in the comment section down below I've just uh, out of curiosity have you ever been completely derailed have I ever yeah, been yeah completely derailed, derailed. Yeah, yeah it was by you and Tom. <laughs> You and Tom derailed me once because, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, we were playing a homebrew quest that I made and the whole thing started with going into a tavern and the tavern master pointed you to out the back. I'm pretty sure you fought some bandits at some stage. There was a kid, there was a baby or in, oh, in a closet. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And you were suppo- the whole point of the story was that you were supposed to take this kid and then take it to somewhere else. But I'm pretty sure it was Tom who just decided to go. I want to stomp on it. <laughs> yeah, and right. then immediately turned because you into were like, a demon. You were like, "Oh, it's a baby with horns," and we were like, "I want to kill it." Yeah, let's kill it. <laughs> which not is fucking stupid. Let's which, kill that. <laughs> which is fine. But you ended up fighting a, a a monster that I had no idea had. And this is the first one of the first times I tried DMing. I'm like, ah, I wasn't prepared for this. So like immediately I went, the ground opens up and you fall into a hole, <laughs> and you ended up absolutely wiping this thing out and like, I didn't have a bad guy for you to fight anymore. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where the fuck do I go? <laughs> sucks, doesn't it? It sucks being derailed, but it's also really fun and you have fun just trying to claw your way back from it. It is good. Anyway, good. We'll, do, we'll do more D&D stuff going forward uh, anyway. There'll probably be more news and stuff to talk about next week anyway. Yes. And if you've been um, gatekeeps before, tell, them, tell, tell the them people to go fuck themselves. Tell them to call me. Email me. Yes. Jacob D. Rice at live.com. <laughs> it's going to be my new thing. If you like something, fucking like it. Who gives a fuck what anybody else thinks? <laughs> yeah, fuck them. Yeah. We'll let you play D&D with us. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob D. Rice at live.com. <laughs> uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Real Talk Rice. And if you want to follow me at Twitter, I'm at Review by Lurch. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I'm a Jared underscore kiddo one. We are on Twitter at real underscore pop. We are on Facebook and Instagram at real talk underscore pop culture discussions. We are on Twitter, twitch.tv forward slash real talk players and all of our news and articles at real talk com. There is an open letter on there to let you know what we're doing in the future. And as always, guys, keep it real. And stay sexy. Bye. Bye. God, I'm good at that. That was really quick too. <laughs> Bye.